So in this video, I will tell you everything you need to know about Nouvellette. I'll be covering his playstyle and show you the greatest damage potential he can achieve with his insane Hydro Laser, which weapons and artifacts are the best for him in a ranking format, as well as cover some of the most insane teams you can build with him. And I will also disclose to you his biggest pros and cons that you need to know about. So whether you're trying to build Nouvellette or considering to pull for him, this is the ultimate video to watch and understand. So let's talk about his talents and personal potential. First, we'll take a look at his skills, and then I'll show you some damage comparisons of the Hydro Laser he shoots out. Now, my Nouvellet is equipped with the latest Hunter Artifact set. The stats are kind of average, which is fine. And then he is also equipped with the prototype Amber Catalyst, which is one of the best general free-to-play weapons he can use. But I'll also talk about and compare other options later in the video. Finally, his talents are all maxed out, and he is Constellation Zero. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that all of Nouvellet's damage scales off with HP. So starting off with this skill, it has a decent multiplier and without any buffs, he can deal about 16,000 damage. The smaller number you see here is the Numa damage. Next, we have the Burst. It's got a decent cost of 70 energy, and the multipliers are a bit better than Yelan's skill, since it deals initial damage of 27,000, and then two more hits are generated for around 11k damage, resulting in almost 50k damage against a single target. What's interesting is that only the initial hit causes a reaction, the other two on the same target will not vape, for example, which I guess it's not that big of a deal breaker. But the majority of Nouvellet's damage will be coming from his normal attack talent, or should I say his charge attack? You see, you can just use his charge attack like normal, but if you hold down the attack button, it will take about 4 seconds to fully charge it up to unleash this massive laser that has a really nice reach and can pierce multiple enemies. However, 4 seconds to charge it up? That's way too long. Luckily, here's where the skill and burst come into play. You probably noticed these source water droplets on the ground. Well, the skill generates 3 of them, while the burst creates 6. By himself, Nubalette cannot pick them up, but the moment you press and hold down his charge attack, he will absorb up to 3 droplets from the ground, and then the charging time of the laser becomes near instant. And here's a couple of fun things about it. He can absorb these droplets when charging up from a pretty far range. And for the most part, you will be able to unleash the laser 3 times if you activate both his skill and burst and leave the 9 droplets on the ground because they can linger for 15 seconds and it takes about 3 seconds to stop channeling the laser. Also, the droplets Traveler generates can also be absorbed by Nouvellette. But would you play this combo? I think you'd only do this if you're one of those people who build crit Kokomi since Traveler and Nouvellette kits are just clashing with each other and besides the droplets, they barely have any synergy. Now, if I just use the laser without any buffs at all and with the current free-to-play build, you can see that each hit deals about 10 1,600 damage with this multiplier. And there will be a total of 8 hits, and this results in about 84,000 damage overall. So, 3 seconds to unleash 84,000 is... Well, not that amazing, but with the right rotation, he can continue doing this for a 3 times total, or about 252,000 damage over 10 seconds or so. However, did you notice how his damage actually starts decreasing over time? Well, this has to do with his second passive talent. You see, he gains Hydro Damage bonus the more current health he has. I showcased to you him doing the laser at 100% HP, and the description here is a bit of a word salad, but basically, as long as he is above 80% health, he gains 30% Hydro Damage bonus, and then for each 1% HP he loses after 80%, his Hydro Damage decreases by 0.6%. Now, here's the twist. Nouvellet actually drains 8% of his HP every half a second when channeling the laser, and this leaves him at exactly 60% health if nobody hit him. So that's why without off-field healing, his damage will decrease slightly. But Luckily, the source water droplets he absorbs restore to him 16% HP for each one picked up, or a total of 48% HP will be restored, leaving a small wiggle room for him if he got hit to go back to 100%. And this is more than enough to fully heal him when he is done charging and wants to unleash another laser. Obviously, it's super beneficial for him to lose HP when channeling the laser, since this allows him to easily take advantage of the full 36% crit rate he can obtain from the Hunter set. And because he will have tons of HP when building him, he is in no danger to get one-shot by strong enemies. But to put it simply, it takes him a long time to charge up the laser, but with the droplets he generates from both his skill and burst, he can instantly unleash it, and while it drains health, he can easily restore it with the droplets he absorbs when charging up. Now, I haven't really done this before in my other videos, but I want to dedicate this next part to his laser's damage comparison and talk about it, because there's a lot of crucial things you need to know about it, and what really makes it fun to use. So, let's do this. Okay, so one major thing I left out about his Hydro Laser was the first passive talent. Whenever anybody in the party causes a Hydro-related reaction, so like Vape, 
freeze, electro charge, hydro swirl, or hydro crystallize, he will gain one stack of past draconic glories, which lasts for 30 seconds. You can see here he gains one of the rings above his head when he causes the hydro related reaction, and it can go up to three times, which looks like this. And as I mentioned, anybody can cause a hydro related reaction. Even if he is switched out, you can see here another party member who causes a hydro reaction, the stack reminder still pops up. But here's the thing he can only obtain maximum of three stacks, and each stack must be from a different hydro reaction. So, no, you you cannot just go and do a couple of vapes, it has to be 3 different hydro reactions to fully max the stack. But is it worth it? Oh yeah, definitely. Unlike many other talents that provide a damage bonus, usually it boils down to lower amounts than the percent shown due to how the formula works. But here, his laser literally gains the respective amount of damage promised. So with one stack, the laser deals 10% more damage, two stacks 20% more, and three stacks just straight up increases the laser by a massive 60% amount. So going back to his original damage output I could achieve without these stacks, he goes from 84,000 to 92,000 with one one stack, to 104,000 with 2 stacks, and 134,000 with 3 stacks. So yeah, this is a passive talent you really need to keep an eye on, because the second and third stack can give him a really significant boost in damage. Now here's the fun part, this was still Nivellet unleashing a laser without any outside buffs. So now, starting with Petra Zhongli and 3 stacks, you can see him putting out some real big numbers. Each laser hit goes for about 23,000 damage, and results in 121% better damage, compared to the laser without any buffs and any stacks. If we go to Kazuha, who is using Freedom Sworn and can both shred the enemy's hydro resistance and boost hydro damage, each laser hit is about 28,000 damage and results in about 173% better damage. But we can take this a bit further. With Mona's Omen buff, Kazuha and two stacks of Nubi's talent, he now hits for 30,000 damage with each hit and results in about 190% better damage. So almost triple the damage he deals compared to without buffs or stacks. But we can still take this further. Let's unequip the free to play weapon and slap on him his signature catalyst and use the best possible supports to max out his damage and allow Nivellet to vaporize his laser hits. Well, now it's pretty ridiculous. His laser almost hits for 96,000 vaporized damage, while non reaction hits cause about 32,000. But hold on to your chair or body pillow because this results in 394% more damage, or about 5 times better damage, than if the laser was without any stacks or buffs. I mean, it's pretty crazy what you can achieve here, but there is a conundrum. So far, I've noticed a lot of the team comps I end up building often result in Nivellet gaining 2 stacks at most. You see, in order to obtain 3 stacks, he literally needs to be in a party with 3 teammates with a different element. Also, regarding the internal cooldown of the laser, with the 8 hits it unleashes, from my own personal testing, it seems like it can cause a total of 4 reactions, which is actually really good since it's only channeled for 3 seconds. And you'll notice how his last 2 hits cause the reaction, which is pretty cool, and important to keep in mind if you want to deal the most optimal vaporized damage. And yes, you can prematurely end the channeling by either jump or dash cancelling. There will be times where you'll need to do it, like if for example fighting against Mago Kenki, who just runs away from you, because while the laser has a decent range, it's still not that super long, so you might need to cancel it. Also, keep in mind, Nuvolet doesn't gain any resistance to interruption when channeling the Hydro Laser. At least, that's how it felt to me. So he can get easily interrupted before charging up or even channeling, and what's even worse, there's some weird camera movement happening sometimes when he gets knocked out of channeling. So with that in mind, a shielder isn't actually such a bad idea to include in his team comps. But before we talk about this, let me quickly cover his build. Hey what's up guys, welcome to Duvalet's extensive build guide. Starting off with artifacts, put on him the hunter set. Thank you for coming, see you next time. No, but really, Hunter Set is just too good on him. It's about 10 to sometimes 20% better than other options. Although, if you are still working towards it, you can easily slap on him either the Heart of Death 4 set or the combinations of one of these two sets. Finally, when it comes to weapon options, Signature no doubt is his best in slot. Other 5 star options like Jadefall Splendor are also decent, and you can give him the Donut, I guess, for that HP substat and healing bonus, but there's literally better 4 star options. Speaking of which, you already saw Prototype Amber putting out some respectable numbers. It's one of his finest free to play options. Not only does it give HP substat bonus, but it also regains him 18 energy when fully refined, which is huge and reduces the energy requirements significantly. And on top of that, he becomes a pseudo healer for the team. Ballad of the Boundless Blue, the 4.1 event weapon, is a slightly worse option. I'd only really recommend it if you can't be bothered to craft Amber because it does offer better stats and passive. Then we have Witsith. Honestly, it's a 
pretty bad catalyst to gamble on. The attack buff is useless for him, the EM buff is situational, and the only good one is elemental damage boost. Crit damage substat is nice, but because the passive triggers only every 30 seconds, and most of his rotations take around 20 seconds, it's just not a reliable weapon option. On the other hand, Hakushin Ring is actually a good niche option if you play him in taser comps, because he will be able to boost everyone's electro and hydro damage, which is nice. Then Favonius Codex is an edge case option, where you would badly need a lot of energy recharge for him or his teammates. Otherwise, if you want to buff someone up, you can also slap on him the Thrilling Tails, which of course also gives him a nice chunk of HP substat. But his best 4 star option by far is the new Battle Pass Catalyst, Sacrificial Jade. Not only does it provide a massive critical rate boost, which is like 73% crit rate you can obtain with Hunter's set, but its passive also provides an amazing HP and EM boost. What's even crazier, when gaining more refinements, Sacrificial Jade will even start to rival the signature Catalyst. However, I still think Prototype Amber, Hakushin Ring, and Ballad of the Boundless Blue are all very decent free-to-play options, especially Amber if you want a well-rounded weapon on him before deciding to build a specialized team for him. And speaking of which, let's talk about this now. Just like in my other showcase videos, keep an eye on the bottom of the screen to see the weapon and stats Nuvalet has. Now, the first team I want to showcase is the free-to-play variation of Hyperbloom with Dendro Traveler, Cookie, and Beto. I'll be honest, Dendro Traveler's circle you need to fight in is a bit annoying at times, so you can easily swap in Yao Yao instead, but the most interesting character of the team I want to talk about is Beto. Surprisingly enough, her burst actually works with charge attacks, so when Nui unleashes the laser, it will deal damage alongside it, and it's so satisfying to see them working together. What's also great is that Beto's burst grants resistance to interruption, something that Nuvolet desperately needs. Otherwise, he gets bonked too easily, and even though Beto's burst does require a lot of energy, you'll most likely play her with another Electro unit like Cookie, Raiden, or Fischl, and the last two can generate a good amount of energy. But the best part? Hyperbloom Nuvelet actually has so many different comps you could go for. You could put in Animo, Petra Zhongli, or even Cryo. The beauty of using Hydro Damage Dealers is that they're extremely flexible in no matter what team they end up. But then, we also have Taser Comp with Hakushin Ring. I think it's one of his best teams where he can shine as an on-field damage dealer, although Taser does usually love to use animal with grouping, especially Sucrose. However, you can go for something like Venti or Kazuha, who can still group up the enemies, and then Nuvi unleashes his laser to deal tons of small hits with all the other off-field damage, which then results in big damage. But the comp that surprised me the most was International with Kazuha. Gone are the days where you need to set up some weird rotations just to double swirl with Kazuha. Now you can just dump Benny's burst on enemy, clear the Pyro R with Nuvelet's skill, burst, and or normal attacks, and then do the double swirl easily. And what's even better? The damage actually ends up really good and flexible, even against some Someone like Mago Kenki, my arch nemesis. Nuvelet doesn't care about Benny's attack boost, although healing is nice, but it's enough for Xiangling and Kazuha to snapshot their bursts, and then you can move around and vaporize the enemies with Hydra attacks. Finally, there's also tons of virgin variations you could go for. My favorite one so far is with Xiangling, because you can't really trigger Toma's burst with Nuvelet, while Diaz's off-field pyre application is pretty sad, but we're used to it, and so Xiangling with full elemental build can help enable virgin comps. And of course, there's also Freeze, which works nicely with a team like Rosaria, Kazuha and Ayaka. But then again, any team really works with Nivellet. And that's the thing about him, he is super flexible because of the Hydro element, and I'm only scratching the surface of potential team comps you could go for, so instead, I wanted to show you some of the best comps to use, but there's definitely gonna be some secret comps that we will discover later on. So what do I think about this dragon? I mean, fellow human. Well, if we look at the pros and cons, the pros would be the insane flexibility when it comes to building teams with him, he has really good AoE damage potential, and he also has great survivability thanks to self-healing. Also, because he has access to several great craftable catalysts, he is a good character to pull for if you're a free-to-play player, and there are several comms you can build by just using 4 stars. Now, on the other hand, he does severely lack resistance to interruption when he's channeling the laser, so he might need a shielder or some other workaround like Beto's burst, and it is a bit scummy if you look at his C1, which improves his resistance interruption, but what can you do about it? Zenla Zone Zero won't build itself without this kind of shenanigans. But one more thing, his single target damage isn't that great unless you have access to very few ways you can boost him. The easiest answer of course is Animo Unit to shred Hydro Resistance, or using him in a team with second Hydro Unit to get that Hydro Resonance, but it's not significant enough of a buff, and double Hydro with him right now is lacking. Maybe when Furina comes out this changes, otherwise I found him to be good at single target performance in International Comp, but he will need a signature catalyst or or Sacrificial Jade to reach this great performance, and I'm not even counting the fact you need Kazuha, or at least Sucrose with a couple of constellations. 
but I would still say he is very much worth the pull for, if you can get behind his playstyle. I think I spent a total of 20 hours just messing around with him, and I'm still discovering some awesome things about his laser and the playstyle as I'm making this video. So yeah, really good unit, really unique playstyle, and a few drawbacks that can be fixed now or maybe in the future. As for his constellations, I think I'll make a separate video about it and compare them to his signature weapon, because there's a lot to go over, and I think it will be funny to see how much more ridiculous his damage, and especially the laser becomes. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'd really appreciate it if you could press the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.